The Justice League Snyder Cut has released new set photos of the Joker that have fans speculating that... Uh... Golly gee, isn't WandaVision the swellest TV show on the dial, huh? Not only is it talk of the neighborhood... Universe created a sitcom starring two Avengers? But the scuttlebutt is that the hits are gonna keep on coming as it changes up the whole party at Marvel. Stay tuned for a word from our sponsor. Did I say that right, Wanda? Uh... During the first few episodes of WandaVision, everyone was trying to figure out who had trapped Wanda in her sitcom prison. Now, S.W.O.R.D. seems pretty darn convinced that Wanda herself is the primary antagonist at play here. She didn't do much to cast any doubt on this when she almost made all the director's men take him out. I mean, I would have been angry too if someone tried to fire at me while I was hanging out with my newborn 10-year-olds. Wu, Darcy, and Rambo argued over who was stronger, Wanda, Thanos, or Captain Marvel. This seemed to be hinting at the idea that Wanda was going to be the next Marvel Big Bad. Well, that and the fact that she's seemingly taken an entire town hostage for what's essentially Leave it to Beaver Westworld. If Wanda can casually alter reality itself at will, then she would be a much greater threat than any villain we've seen thus far. Thanos and Malachite both had access to the Reality Stone and never used it to this level of disturbing. Reality can be whatever I want. That is unless dark elf sitcoms are all about giants trying to obliterate the universe. Without a doubt, the biggest shock in WandaVision was the surprise guest star, long lost brother Pietro. While many had guessed Aaron Taylor Johnson would reprise his role from Age of Ultron, few people guessed what really happened. Evan Peters, the Quicksilver from the 20th Century Fox X-Men franchise, showed up rocking the Uncle Jesse look on the Maximoff's doorstep. This would seem to imply that not only is Wanda messing with the reality of Westview citizens, but of other Marvel universes. Wanda could have just opened up a portal to the X-Men universe. Evan Peters could be the tip of the iceberg here, leading to Magneto, Deadpool, Professor X, and even Wolverine making cameos in the future. Hopefully they don't do a sequel to Dark Phoenix, nobody needs to see that. Then there's the whole House of M elephant in the room we haven't addressed yet. Wanda's most famous storyline to date features her altering the universe itself to a fantasy world where her and her kids can finally live in peace. Sound familiar? Yeah. This ends with Wanda infamously obliterating most of the mutants on Earth. Fans think that Wanda could easily flip this on its head by having her introduce mutants instead of taking them out. I'm not as convinced, seeing as there are no MCU X-Men movies coming out anytime soon. It's been confirmed for a while now that Wanda will play a big role in the Doctor Strange sequel, Multiverse of Madness. Seeing as the words Multiverse of Madness could accurately be used to describe WandaVision, I'd say this isn't surprising. Dr. Darcy, who apparently was paying a lot more attention to Jane Foster than any of us thought, told us that the Hex was messing around with cosmic microwave background radiation. This is apparently relic radiation from the Big Bang. I mean, I knew that already, but I'm glad she explained it for you guys. It's a working theory. This kind of reality warping situation sounds like the exact sort of thing a Sorcerer Supreme should deal with. If S.W.O.R.D. doesn't get Wanda in control, this will likely get bumped up to Doctor Strange's problem. There's been a ton of speculation over how this is going to go. Has Wanda severed the connection between the MCU and other Marvel universes? Is she altering the fabric of the MCU's reality to help her grief? Is there another villain Strange and Wanda will have to team up to fight? At this point in WandaVision, I'm pretty sure it's going to be all three. Regardless, it seems pretty likely that Wanda's raw strength is going to go up against Strange's expertise. Who knows, maybe a new Sorcerer Supreme is about to be crowned, huh? So what's going on with this Spider-Man 3 film that's supposed to come out in 2021? For months, we've gotten updates on how old Spider-Man actors like Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Alfred Molina, and Jamie Foxx would be returning to join Tom Holland. Then Tom Holland came out and said that he hadn't heard anything about it. Are they just not telling him anything about his own movies anymore? Hopefully WandaVision can sort some of this out. If Evan Peters is truly the Pietro from the 20th Century Fox films, then that officially opens up the MCU to all other Marvel properties in a vast Marvel multiverse. Is that everyone? I do want it more. They could even drop hints about other Spider-Man universes as Wanda continues to unravel the MCU. This could very well be the new Infinity Stone style MacGuffin that ties all the Phase 4 films together. The Jane Foster Thor, Spider-Verse, and rumored Inhumans reboot could all be because of Wanda's multiverse meddling. And while they're doing all of this, could they finally tell us whether or not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is canon still? I just want to know if there's a chance for Daisy to team up with Monica Rambeau in the future. Don't give me hope if there isn't any Marvel. Is anyone else's social media blowing up with Mephisto theories right now? 
It seems like every day fans have concocted dozens of theories about how Marvel's resident king of evil, Mephistopheles, is going to be revealed as the secret bad guy of WandaVision. It seems like every Marvel fan out there has their own Mephisto theory. The one I've been pitching from day one is that the resident demon of the neighborhood, Dottie, has actually been Mephisto all along. Others I've seen are that director Hayward is the red-faced demon, Evan Peters is Mephisto trying to keep Vision in line, and that Mr. Hart is actually the boss of hell itself. The one that seems most likely is that nosy neighbor Agnes is actually Agatha Harkness, a witch in the Marvel comics. She might be working for Mephisto, which would explain why she's the Westview citizen with the biggest role in their lives. If Mephisto is in the Marvel Universe, it's a huge deal. He's a bad guy who has shaped pretty much everyone from Ghost Rider to Doctor Strange and even to Spider-Man. The potential mayhem for someone like Mephisto to rain down upon the MCU is truly limitless. His inclusion is inevitable at this point, and WandaVision seems like the perfect place. In the comics, Wanda's twins were taken from Mephisto's soul, and he plotted to get them back. I kind of doubt they're going to go that dark on Disney+, Plus, but hey, we'll see. There is perhaps nothing in the MCU that Kevin Feige is hinting at harder than the Young Avengers. Seriously, how could they not have announced a movie or Disney Plus series yet? You've got the aged-up Cassie Lang, Kate Bishop coming in Hawkeye, and Kang appearing in the third Ant-Man. There's also Miss Marvel who's getting her own TV series, and who could easily be inducted into the MCU version of the team. Perhaps the biggest hint so far is that the Young Avengers are coming in the fact that Wanda just gave birth to the rapidly aging Tommy and Billy Maximoff. These two, the future Wyken and Speed, are vital members of the team, and there's really no reason to introduce them if you aren't doing the Young Avengers. I bet you anything Disney Plus continues to roll out Young Avengers characters like Patriot or Miss America in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Hulkling in Secret Invasion, and Ironheart or Iron Lad in War Machine. They'll all likely team up to take on Kang the Conqueror as they try desperately to save the world and prove themselves more memorable than that Hulu Runaways adaptation. We don't do that here. I love that characters like Rhodey, Sam Wilson, and Bucky are getting TV shows of their own. That's because there's a long tradition of superheroes in the MCU having best friends who become superhero sidekicks. Ever since Terrence Howard infamously said, Next time, baby. to an Iron Man suit he would never inhabit, the best bud to future hero trope was born in the MCU. That proud tradition looks to be continuing on with Monica Rambeau, the daughter of Captain Marvel's bestie, and the designer of her costume has now been given a much larger role. In the comics, Monica was actually Captain Marvel for a while before becoming a hero called Photon and then Spectrum. WandaVision hinted at this by showing that Maria Rambo's call sign was Photon. So that begs the question, will Monica go by her mom's call sign to honor her? Or will she go by Spectrum instead? She'll need to figure that out before she somehow gets superpowers in Captain Marvel 2 because her Disney Plus series is going to need a title. I would prefer a next wave series with Monica as the star, but hey, that just seems greedy, even on Disney Plus. WandaVision Episode 4 introduced us to the new S.H.I.E.L.D.-style MCU organization that studies weird comic booky things like Agent Coulson did in the background of those early movies. More importantly, it reintroduced us to characters like Jimmy Woo from Ant-Man and the Wasp and Darcy from Thor. These two minor, kind of forgotten characters in their big screen appearances shine so much brighter on the small screen, leading to calls for them to get a show. After WandaVision ends and director Hayward almost certainly gets fired, Wu and Darcy are probably going to get hired full-time. That means that an X-Files style show where the pair investigate Marvel problems too weird for the big screen is a surefire hit. Would it be too much if Lewis and a security company was brought in too? Nothing's impossible, because rumor has it that the suits at Marvel and Disney Plus are already shopping a Wu Files series around. I just hope that Wu and Darcy run into a monster who can only be defeated by someone with mad rap skills, because Randall Park has insane skills. Google it. You're welcome. The Squadron Supreme is one of those crazy superhero teams you wouldn't think would be legal. That's because they are a blatant ripoff of DC's Justice League. Take the Golden Caped Hyperion, or the Gritty Nighthawk, and see if you can figure out which of DC's heroes each was trying to parody. Once upon a time, it would have seemed insane to think the Squadron Supreme would actually appear in the MCU, but WandaVision has proven that insane is Marvel's brand now. WandaVision kept this going by dropping in a character named Phil Jones, the husband of Arcana. Is it possible that Dottie will get superpowers and become a Justice League-style superhero? I hope so, because that's likely the closest we'll ever get to the Justice League taking on the Avengers on the big screen. Wait, Justice League? Wasn't this video supposed to be about the Snyder Cut? I feel like something's wrong. In the comics, Vision has an even more complicated origin than he did in the MCU. 
Instead of being Ultron's dream body that could somehow fly, go through walls, and look like Paul Bettany, he was a synthesoid who was created by Ultron using a different Marvel hero's brain. Also, he still looked like Paul Bettany. The hero who Ultron used to make his vision was none other than Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man. Wonder Man's strange relation to Vision's brain patterns have made him a part of the Vision family in the comics. Both Wonder Man and his brother, the villainous Grim Reaper, have frequently featured in Vision stories, so fans have long guessed that Wonder Man will at least have a cameo in WandaVision. In fact, I think there's a good chance we may have already met him. If Evan Peters isn't actually the 20th Century Fox's Quicksilver, it would make perfect sense for him to be Simon Williams, the character's a famous actor in the Marvel comics, and would be a great role for the notoriously chameleonic Peters. It's even possible that he could be the original missing person that Wu was looking for. If the Quicksilver thing was really a gag, making Peters a different hero would be a great way to make peace with all the excited X-Men fans who would be so, so angry.